Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. And I promise you this conversation is going to be important, especially if you are a new investor, especially if you feel kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. Dan and I are going to try to, to help you get going. How are you doing this morning, Dion? Howdy. I'm doing really good, Mike. Thanks for having me back. Awesome, man. So, hey, I want to have a, almost like a fictitious conversation, or we're going to talk about a fictitious person. You know, we can, we can bring all of our history from all the people we've talked about. Let's assume it's a new investor, right? They still smell all clean and new and fresh. They found bigger pockets, or maybe they found YouTube University, and they've just started diving down the rabbit hole, right? Uh, they probably came to real estate. We can make same, some assumptions that they want financial freedom. Let's assume that. Uh, let's assume also they have a day job. Let's, let's put out there. So they're not going to be a wholesaler or a flipper or anything. So something like you and I've done, right? Buy and hold, have a day job, and they want financial freedom. So I guess the first question I have for you, because I see these folks all the time is, when is enough enough, right? When you've spent that hundredth hour on YouTube or bigger pockets, or you've had that, you know, 300th podcast you've listened to, when, when do you, when do you pull up? And when do you go out and do what I call kick rocks and walk through properties and look at stuff? Do you see this in folks? I, I see it a lot. And I think the, the problem that made it take a long time for me to realize what the problem was, was I invested for a few years before doing research. Uh-huh. So when I found YouTube University or Bigger Pockets a blog uh, before they had a YouTube channel, I, and then when I found your book that pretty much literally spelt out one rental at a time, here's how you find it on the MLS. Here's how you use traditional lending. Here's how the fur, you know, you have four properties and your life will be changed. I mean, you, you spelt out the whole thing, but I was doing it. And then I found the data. Ah. So it helped me refine and it helped me hone in on what I need to do. Mm. But then I started helping new investors get started. And it seems like the same situation over and over and over. Someone reaches out and I'll try to keep this as fictitious as possible. So if this sounds a lot like you, the person that's called me in the past, I'm not talking about you. (laughs) Someone reaches out and says, I want to do what you've done. I want to be in the position you're in. I want to invest and I want to have cash flow so that I can make work optional. And then two months later, we have the same conversation, word for word. Like the advice that I said, here's how you get started, needs to be repeated because... I mean, technically for me, there's basically six steps. Learn how to save, work on your credit score, talk to a lender to find out what you can borrow, talk to an agent to figure out your auto searches. And so those first steps are the same all the way up to the, the six that I pretty much walk people through. So in those beginning stages, you also want to be educating yourself. This is where you read one rental at a time. This is where you watch, you know, the, the one rental at a time. Uh, YouTube channel. This is where you watch bigger pockets. This is where you ask questions of people who've been there. But we get stuck in a loop of all of the first steps aren't actionable. Mm. Saving money, putting is not um, making an offer. And the really good thing about running a truck driving school is that the training is very short. It's only four weeks long. So every four weeks, we have a new group of people come who don't know anything about what we're about to teach them. And the hardest thing of teaching somebody something is remembering what it's like to not know something. Mm -hmm. So since my W2 job is constantly starting over like Groundhog's Day with this is the basic core knowledge, I've learned that it comes in stages. So as an investor, once you have some knowledge, learning more doesn't do any good until you put it through some trials. And those trials are make an offer, figure out your numbers, narrow down your criteria. If you're not getting enough information, you might need to change the footprint and where you're searching. Or like my example, when I first started, I was looking for single family houses. And in my area, they just don't cash flow. So I had to switch what I was searching for into small multifamily, which do cash flow. And so that's what I see a lot is you can't learn all of it until you've learned some and try some of it and then learn more. I like that. Yeah, I think that's, that's a fair. Yeah, I think that's very fair. The thing 
other other things that I see, and again, if you think this is you, it's not you. I'm I'm just I'm blending thousands of conversations together. Is I might talk to someone on Monday and then I talk to them again on Friday. On Monday, they wanted to be a buy and hold uh, investor just like you and I. By Friday, they have become syndicators for storage facilities. I'm like, you know, a couple of things. Well, how did we get from A to B? I'd love to see how that worked. And all the way, oh, by the way, in all fairness, one thing I pride myself on is I stay in my lane. If you are looking to A, be a syndicator or B, talk about storage, I'm not your, you know, I'm not the guy because I'm just going to tell you, don't know, right? So um, in the beginning, there certainly is time to figure out your lane in real estate. Totally get it. Go do A to Z, go figure out. But at some point, and I, you know, for me, it's got to happen in the first 90 days. There's something in real estate that will speak to you. It'll just speak to you. And then you got to drop everything else. No more shiny objects and go deep in that area. And then go find a mentor or someone experienced who has done it. Don't come to Mike Zuber one rental at a time and talk about storage facilities. I, I got nothing for you uh, as an example. So this is something that I haven't articulated before, so I'm probably going to mess it up. And it's only going to make sense to any nerds that are watching, nerds like me. If you're playing a game like World of Warcraft or Skyrim, you figure out what that character is going to look like months from now, after you put in all the work to get to what you want it to look like. Once you know that end product, you back up to how you want to play the game. Real estate is very similar. Hmm. And I know that you don't like to gamify investing, but I like to gamify because games have systems. So I systematize how I look for properties, how I make offers, how I deal with uh, lenders, how I deal with my agents. Almost like to me, it's a game because I want to progress. And the games that I play, like the one behind me, <laughs> is a progressive type of game. So as an investor, in, that be in the beginning, you need to pick the end goal, whether it's syndication, the Burr method, flipping, wholesaling. Yeah buy and hold local like at a distance, uh, short-term, long-term. Once you narrow that down to the one that speaks to you, then it's a lot easier to target your information sources, find somebody who's done it to either have a mentor or at least get advice, but then to know the steps to take. And again, I think the purpose of this video is to know that they need that a person needs to take those steps. Some people call it analysis paralysis. I, it's just we want to over-educate ourselves on everything. And then you have a lot of knowledge that you're not going to be able to apply because you do need to focus how you do your investing. Yeah. And that was something that I built in to the course that I have is, is okay, you know, first thing I tell them, step one, second, third video is focus. What's your criteria, right? What's your box? But then, as you know, if you've, you've gone through it, I tell you to build your spreadsheet, right? What factors do you think are important? Because I don't know all markets. I certainly don't know everything. So, so make this yours. I don't even give you my spreadsheet, which again, you paid for the thing. So I give you everything, but it's like three or four videos later. I'm like, okay, now that you've been playing with yours for a while, this is what I use. And most of the time I suspect my spreadsheet is way simpler than what most people build. Because in my world, all I'm trying to do is compare how much I'm spending, how much I'm getting and what's the you know yield or cash on cash. And that's how I can compare a 20 unit building with a one bedroom, one bath condo. I put everything on the same spreadsheet and I buy whatever has the highest yield. It's just that simple. But yeah, I guess it's a game, right? What's the criteria? Do it, do it again, do it again, do it again. And it probably feels uncomfortable for a couple of weeks. Good. It's supposed to, right? It's kind of like a golf swing. The first time you pick up a golf club, it is this most unnatural thing. But by the time you've hit 100 or 200 or 400 golf balls, it's not that you're, you know, you're not going to play on the PGA Tour, but, you know, the, the swing will feel better. And that's all I'm trying to build. That's what I try to do is get people out there. And then the real crux of the spreadsheet is by day 60 or day 90, you have unknowingly built confidence in yourself. If you ask the real goal of my course is I'm trying to build confidence in the person doing it. Because by the time you've gone through 100 or 200 or 250, you can now rank them, sort the columns. That's the best deal. That's the best deal. That's a horrible deal. That's in the middle. 
So that's really what I'm trying to do, gamify the learning process via repetition. Does that make sense? That does. And I know you're trying to be humble and say that your spreadsheet is very simple and more simple than other people um, have make. And I've seen some very complex people have sent me, hey, what do you think of my spreadsheet? And I'm like, oh, I'm going to need a 10 hour class with you to yeah, figure out what I'm not even sure what it means. <laughs> right. Whoa. Yours is, is, I agree, it's very simple. And I, I will be doing a review of the course, um, you know, someday, but not today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you did something so simple in that spreadsheet when you were giving the, the example. Mm -hmm. And I've been investing for over 10 years. I have a few spreadsheets that I use. I shared my spreadsheet in the How I Self-Manage video for the course. Mm -hmm. But the thing that you did, I've never thought of in 10 years. And to me, that made that one thing made the, everything else in the course, which was great, worth it because of the one thing that you did that was awesome. so simple, it was easy to do, which is the goal with your spreadsheet is to keep it simple so it's easy yeah. to do. Yeah, that's, I'm glad to hear that. I met that uh, I got a little goosebumps. That's good. I'm, I, I, it's really, you know, when you try to develop something for newbies and you really do put your honest efforts and just document everything you've done, it's, it's nice to see that people from all experiences levels can, can gleam important things. So that's pretty cool to hear. Thank you. No, I appreciate all the work that you do. Um, I, I, yeah. I think I say it often. Yeah, um, that's, that's you, you make my, my news gathering a lot easier because every morning you get up so early, you go through all that content and then you put it together into the stuff that matters to an investor. Yeah. Uh, so if people aren't there every morning at 730, they should be. I appreciate that. And again, I don't know if it comes across, but I still have fun every morning. I've been doing it 30 years. I just now get to take some notes and talk to a camera. I, I've been doing it for so long. It's, it is literally the part of my morning. I, I wake up, you know, start the coffee machine. Get my now I get out a piece of paper so I can take notes and uh, yeah it's a good time for me good good times had by all so I'm glad you appreciate that and you're part of part of my 7:30 uh, team so that's awesome uh, but back to this person who what I really want to get to is I think there are too many people stuck in YouTube University or, or bigger pocket whatever you want to call it university and. Uh, I guess I just want to be clear. If you are spending, if you have spent over a hundred hours in either of those platforms or combined, and you haven't looked at real estate, you need to look yourself in the mirror. You need to shut those apps down and go look at Zillow or Redfin or go to an open house or something. Uh, you can't do real estate investing solely by looking at your computer forever. It'll make the interactions with everyone else in the real estate um, world more productive. If you watch a bunch of videos and then you ask the creator a question that can't go anywhere until you try to use what they're teaching you and then come back with follow-up questions. Yeah, this, this real estate is a people business. I have admitted it hundreds of times now. I spent the first three to five years thinking the answer was an Excel based spreadsheet. I could outsmart the real estate market. And I could tell you, I've made millions and millions of dollars networking with people, telling everybody I know what I'm looking for. The only deals I've done in the last 18 months are off market. It's not that I've stopped looking. I look every day. I wrote 250 offers last year and got nothing. So don't tell me I'm not doing the work. But yeah, it's the more people you know, the more people you'll talk to, the more stories, the more private money, the more contractors will bail you out if you need help. It's just such an ecosystem, real estate investing. Please go talk to people. Please go talk to people. Yep. I agree with that 100%. Um, I think when I'm interacting in a, a mastermind group or interacting with other investors, I don't think I've ever started a meeting with, this is what I want to learn today. Mm. But I leave those interactions with, Oh yeah, I'm surprised by what I learned interacting with other people. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Again, get out there, meet people, network. Again, the most important thing a new investor could tell someone, it's almost like a business card. Hi, my name is Michael Zuber. I live for three bedroom, two bath homes between 11 and 1500 square feet, between 150 and 180 grand. Get your criteria, your focus down and tell everyone. Any closing thoughts on this topic, Dion? Uh, I would 
wrap up just the way that you did. Let everybody know what you're doing. You never know who's going to bring you a deal. I have a standing deal with everyone that I know in my world that if they bring me a deal that I buy, I will give them $500. Oh, yeah. Uh, except for the agents that bring me the deals, they're going to get the commission. But everybody yeah. else, you have a shot. At it. Yeah, it's 500 bucks. Why not? <laughs> Thanks, Dion. This has been a lot of fun, man. I always appreciate you. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, Mike. You too.